Good afternoon, Mikel. Hello. Um, big game against Brentford tomorrow. Good, sorry, try Saturday. Good start. Um, <laughs> what's the team news ahead of that one? Uh, not much. Um, we had got some players back uh, last weekend, last Monday, sorry. Uh, and then we had Martinelli and Bukayo with little issues. Uh, we are pretty positive that hopefully they can be part of that, but we'll have to wait and see how they feel tomorrow. One change you will have to make, of course, is in goal. Yeah. With Aaron Ransdale coming in for David Wright, I would assume. When you look at that situation, would you rather him have had a bit more game time going into such a big game like this? It's what it is. Uh, he's fully prepared. He trains really well every day. Uh, he's desperate to play, uh, like the rest of the boys that haven't had that many opportunities. And, and tomorrow, or sorry, on Saturday, is a great, uh, great day for him. What's his mood and his attitude been like around? He's been brilliant. He's been. Uh, Really good, really supportive, uh, really pushing every day in training like I expected and, and it's a joy to have two top goalkeepers in, in the team. Mikel, either side of the new year you had those three defeats in a row, two in the league and, and, and the FA Cup exit as well. Then you had the warm weather training in Dubai and it's been in the league at least seven wins in a row, 31 goals scored. Can you give us a bit of an insight into what happened there, what, what you said to the players, which players were quite forthright about what was going on beforehand. Yeah, well, it was necessary. Obviously, we had a really tough period uh, before that. Uh, we played so many games. Uh, we had some defeats, um, especially not deserving to lose matches. But I think it was something uh, as well that probably was necessary to to keep improving and keep demanding ourselves the weather, the temperature, some of the things that we had time to work on to improve as a team as well. And, um, and everything clicked and then we won, we were playing good and, and that helps. Do you think you'll look back on that as maybe a turning point in your season, that trip? <laughs> well, it was really good, uh, to be fair. It was, it was a perfect timing for us. Um, while we build there, the chemistry, the energy that it was around the place, the amount of time that we have to spend together and enjoy that, that part where it was on the field, out of the field, uh, it was a really positive trip. Um, Brentford last season in, in the home game, we know what happened, there was, a, there was an error with VAR. Does that still irk you and is it something that motivates you when you go into this game? Well, every point that, um, that we left or we left this season, it hurts and, and obviously it's still there and, uh, and that's it, but we have a lot to play for. Uh, we know the difficulty of the match uh, is always really tough. Uh, we played them twice already and, and we suffer and we always suffer against Brentford and on Saturday I expect a very similar match. I guess for you it's just to get the job done on Saturday and then we'd be watching a certain game that's happening on Sunday at Anfield, Liverpool. And that's the only thing we can control and, and perform well and, and play better than them and, and end the right to win the game. And, um, and let's do that. And, and if we do that on Sunday, yeah, it's a beautiful game to watch for any football supporter and I will certainly be watching it. Do you care about the result? I can control it. Uh, I will enjoy a magnificent game of football, which were the best teams in, in Europe in the last decade and, uh, and let's see what that brings but uh, the focus is on us and Brentford. I thought you'd ask it like that but privately do you have a preference? No, privately and publicly I have the same one because it's nothing to do with me. Okay, just one final one from me just on the contract situations of some of your players. I know you're wanting to tie a lot of your players down to, to longer term contracts. Can you tell us anything on Ben White and, and Tommy Yasu? Are, are they close? Not really, and uh, and I leave that more uh, to Edu and, and the club to, to announce those things when, when the times are right. Thank you, good luck. Thank you. Thanks so much. Alex from the Premier League. Thank you. Help. Hi. Um, 21 goals scored in the last four league games, just the one goal conceded. How satisfying are these performances for you as manager right now, and what sort of a message are they sending out to your title rivals? Yeah, it's great because it shows obviously the quality and, and the consistency that the team is showing. and. Um, and then the way that we have scored those goals as well, not only the manner but as well the personnel. So it's really positive thing to to see. And then the fact that yeah we are considering very little defensively. So those two ingredients together are very powerful to get results and to get consistency. And um, and we want more. Sure. So Brentford up next for you on Saturday. Then victory, of course, would send you top of the league. Would it be safe to say that? Your players need no more motivation than to put the pressure on Liverpool and Man City to have to respond to your result on Sunday. 
Yeah, we know the demands that we have. Uh, we know the demands that uh, Brentford are going to ask us to to put to win the match, and uh, and then the fact that yeah, we are still not there, and we want to be better uh, than where we are at the moment. In order to do that, we have to continue to win. I know you've not given much away there on your preference, but can we assume maybe that you'll be hoping to see Liverpool and City both drop points with a draw at Anfield? Honestly, it has nothing to do with me. I will sit there with my kids and enjoy the match. Worth a try. Um, to have just two points separating the top three with less than a third of the season left to play, some might say that this is the best title race we've ever seen. Would you agree with that? Well, I can imagine that for, for a lot of people it's very interesting and, uh, and we want to make it uh, very interesting, especially for us, so we have to keep going. Um, after the Sheffield United win, I know you spoke about the fact that the signings you made last summer are playing such a pivotal part in your current momentum. Um, Kai Havertz, one of those, absolutely shining right now. I just wonder how pleasing is it for you to see the impact he's having both on and off the pitch, particularly given that you know there were some questions asked early mm. on when he first joined. Yeah, it says about his character as well and, and how he has dealt with, with all those question marks and, um, and the attitude that he showed all the time, you know, when things were... Not that good in, in certain phases of the game, but um, he continued to work hard. That's what is love for everybody here. And then, yeah, we can see his quality. We can see his intelligence on the pitch and, and the contribution he's having to the pitch. So, obviously, very happy with him. Yeah, and on quality, another one of those summer signings, Declan Rice, enjoying his most prolific Premier League season so far, five goals and five assists. He, though, says that he wants way more than he's got right now. How contagious is that mindset among this group of players you're working with? Yeah, that, that's something I think is, uh, is amongst the team, that uh, they want to keep improving. Um, they all believe that they have still another gear or two to go. And, uh, and that's the level that uh, we want to push them to. And, uh, and we are achieving it with, with the majority of the players, and, and we have to continue to do that. Thank you. Thank you. Brad from Talks Hi, Mikel. Hi. Hope you well. When you first became Arsenal manager back in 2019, when you look at the way that Arsenal are playing at the minute, is this always how you envisage your Arsenal side to, to play like when you first took over? Very difficult to do it if you don't know uh, the players that you have. At the end, you have to adapt to the, to the players, to the quality that they have in order to, to play and achieve what you want to do. But I'm really satisfied with, with, with the way that's in place. And what changes do you notice in your side this season? Do you feel they're more experienced, maybe more wiser than, than, than what we saw towards the end of last season? Yeah, experience is a factor. They have played um, more time together as well. They understand the system better. They understand the way we have to compete um, and the demands that we have to put to ourselves better. And um, and then the confidence grows when, when results go their way and performances as well. So. And on Kai Havertz as well, how, how key is he to the way that you want to play and the way that you want your, your forward players to, to press from the front? Yeah, his ability, obviously, to... <laughs> To occupy spaces, but as well in transition moment to exploit them. Uh, the aggression that he has in, in high press is, is really, really good. He has the physical qualities as well to play very different kind of games. And that's um, an attribute that um, that we thought was going to be very positive for us. An Arsenal legend Thierry Henry said on the TV on, on Monday that he can see similarities between Declan Rice and, and Yaya Toure. I wonder what your thoughts are on that and, and maybe how many more goals Declan Rice could get going forward in the future as he tries to... Very good Declan. players to get compared to because Yaya was an incredible player and, uh, and what he did in this league, he was outstanding and, um, and Declan wants more, so that's a good sign. That's great. Best of luck, Saturday. Thank you. Thank you. Oh. Hi, Mikhail. I was Hi. just wondering on Aaron. Um, when we've seen him on the bench, he still seems very invested in what's going mm -hmm. on on the pitch and I was just wondering, we all know he's a big personality. How big has that been for you, I guess, with what was a difficult decision to, I guess, leave him on the bench at the time? Yeah, one of the toughest things is, is, is to deal with a place that they don't have in the amount of time that they deserve. And uh, not only Aaron, but with many of those. But uh, we have an unbelievable group of players. We, we try to be uh, straight and explain things and be close to them and give them the support that we want. And then when they have the opportunity, at the end, um, they want to, to contribute to a team the best possible way, and, and that's what Aaron will try to do on Saturday. And slightly different kind of theme. I was wondering, um, a lot of people have this concept of rest and how, I guess, gaps in, in between games are quite good for, for teams. But I was wondering, do you maybe prefer having the momentum that you may be able to build when there's a shorter period of time between games? Well, we had uh, a very strange schedule lately, you know, because we have a long period uh, after Newcastle and, and this game. The, the same happened uh, 
a week or two ago, but uh, we have adapted and uh, we have to have the capacity to adapt to that. It's true that now we're going to have two games um, very close to each other and then we're going to have a big gap again after the international break to, to Man City. So try to plan it the right way to, to maximise the, the time that we get. Okay. Hi, Mikhail. Hi. Um, you spoke there about Aaron being left on the bench and his positive reaction to it. Um, at Sheffield United, obviously, Eddie, Reese, and Jamil were also left among the subs. I know there's lots of reasons why you made the subs you did that night, but when things like that happen and maybe they've not get, been getting those opportunities, are there any fears in your mind that maybe you lose them a bit mentally going forward or do you think they're just as, as switched on as they always have been? Uh, we we discussed that thing. We cannot play every play every, every game, you know, and those players played a few days ago against Newcastle and they have the opportunities to do that. And uh, and now we have five souls. Before we had only three. So we have another two players happy, you know, that's the way I take it. But you're always going to have players that want to be involved and play. But unfortunately, it is impossible. There's nothing, it's not in our hands. It is impossible to, to achieve that. So they know that. Uh, have you pulled any of those specifically aside to say, look, this is what's going on. You'll get your opportunities later on if you keep sort of playing right on the train. Like that. Yeah, but you cannot really promise anything. <laughs> you know what's going to happen in a week time in three or, or, or seven <coughs> days. But um, just I think we have to show the the compassion and how we need to feel they need to feel that we are next to them and we understand where they are but the reality as well is this is football it's a team sport and you have to understand and fulfill the role that you have in the moment and it might be very different in three weeks time slight gear change but um, i remember with the man city amazon documentary when you were working with pep there was a, a big game that man city had i can't quite remember what the game was but you guys all went out to dinner and watched the game together i just wondered I didn't remember about that. You gave me an idea, but uh, <laughs> but the idea was to watch it with with my kids. But I don't know what I'm gonna do. James, hi Mikel. Hi. Um, just on Aaron again. Um, c can he adapt to what you want from a goalkeeper, or is the team gonna have to change their approach with with him in goal? Not only that, he can adapt. He has proven that he can perform really well to what I want and what we want. So does he have a chance of keeping his place? Do you tell him that going into this weekend, this is your chance, or does he know already this is kind of a one-off? Uh, we don't have that kind of conversation with players. I know with Adam, with any other player in the field that I play today, and you have a chance to play next week. That doesn't happen. Um, obviously, facing Brentford brings you against Ivan Tony. He's a player you've been linked with a lot in the past. Obviously, nothing happened in January. That kind of speculation has gone quiet now. Can you rule out move for Ivan Tony in the summer? I don't talk about any other player because if not I have to be ruling out every player in the market because we are only with a lot of players, that's it. And just one on following up on that in terms of a striker generally, obviously you've been scoring goals all over the place recently. Yeah. Does that change your thinking about the summer and whether you need a forward? No, the plans that we have for the summer are very clear um, and they were done almost at the start of the season, understanding the, what we can have, um, the contract situation that we have with some players and, and how we want to improve and maintain the level of the team. So this certainly is not changing anything. Okay, we're now going for 12 o'clock Friday.